Yo, what's up guys? Boss here and I'm back with another YouTube video and this time we're going to be playing some early season ladder using the deck that finished number one in the world last season. So, Moogie finished number one last season. Absolutely insane, you know, Japanese pro player. In my opinion, one of the most talented players in this game. And what I mean by that is he has school. He's pretty young. I think he's like 17 years old, you know, but he's just insanely good at this game and he's not someone who plays this game like a ton which is why i consider him one of the most talented players in this whole game he finished number one last season using this mortar deck that's what i'm going to be using this mortar deck and then a couple variants that were like similar to it have been very strong in this ebarbs meta it's a very good like defensive deck obviously mortar on defense can get you so much value in several matchups ebarbs as well really good on defense and then the pressure is insane too because ebarbs aren't only good on defense they're also really good on offense and i almost consider them a wink addition especially when they're paired with like a minor you know an ice golem it can be really hard for your opponent to stop so before we get the first game if you guys want to support me you can use my critical boss it helps support me the channel and i really do appreciate all you guys who do use my code means a lot so uh you know um, the season just started so i didn't even really play games yet 700th right now so we're fairly high we should verse some yeah good opponents still um and if you guys are wondering how i finished last season 227th honestly i'm not happy at all because i actually made it to 8030 and then i tilted um i would have if i stayed where i was at i would have finished 21st in the world but if i'm being honest with you guys i don't regret playing because um i just because i wanted to get top 10 um like i already you know i've finished fifth and sixth in the world before so like i really wanted to get like another really good finish um and top 10 also gives you the most points for the crl you get 40 points for finishing top 10 um so that was something I was kind of going for, but, you know, unfortunately I didn't get it. I ended up tilting like almost, yeah, 400 trophies, which is pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, it's, I guess it's all good. Uh, now, uh, starting from now, actually every, um, um, this next season end, I'm going to be done school. And I guess the season's after that, so I'm going to have more time to play and I'm hoping I can be more consistent with the ladder finishes um like once i'm able to play this game more um because yeah as i said in previous videos i'm taking a little bit of time off before i start college probably like six months or something like that of not taking like any classes just to you know take a break and then you know focus on this game full time for a while um but anyway this guy is using graveyard for sure because we've already seen you know the poison out of him i don't think this is a great matchup if i'm being honest but um like you can still win it so we're gonna go for a musketeer i'm actually glad that didn't cross over because otherwise he might have gone for a graveyard i feel like the way you win this matchup is you have to kind of abuse the musketeer um i don't think that was a very good valkyrie so i'm actually going to try to pressure him here because the valkyrie is the one of the best answers i think to the e-barbs in his deck so mortar should be able to mm, kind of sucks that it shot the ice wizard that was already dead but we are going to be able to hopefully get two hits on the tower which i guess is worth it but yeah again it kind of sucks i hate when the mortar does that like it shoots something that's already dead but i guess it makes sense because at the time it like locked on it it was still alive but that's just unlucky in some situations obviously So he's just gonna go for a poison on that. I guess we can go for a mortar. And then we'll go e barbs to protect. And he just went for his bar barrel, so I guess we can send in the miner. And okay, bomb terror has to come out from him on defense. He hasn't used a single graveyard yet. He's been playing this very passively so let's go for a high musketeer so he can't poison the tower and the musketeer instead he decides to poison the mortar ok 
Okay, good tornado on his end. Luckily, we should be able to defend this without too much of a problem. We actually have a pretty good lead at this point, so we're looking pretty good here. We're going to go for a fireball, and that should actually propel the Ice Wizard into the opposite lane. So let's just try to keep this up here. I'm actually going to go E-Barbs in the opposite lane to pressure, so this way... He's unable to support this graveyard too much. Because you can see he has to defend the E-Barbs, which actually are going to... They pretty much took his whole tower because he decided to ignore them. So that's why I was saying um, that the pressure there was a pretty good idea. So he couldn't support the graveyard too much and like overwhelm me. And at the same time, he lost almost his whole tower in the process. So that was great. We're going to block this baby dragon. And then we're going to pressure with an Ice Golem in front of this here just to make sure once again that he can't support this graveyard nearly as much as he'd like. Um, E-Barbs actually do get on the tower, and yeah, this is a good game for sure. Actually, Log Fireball takes it right here, so that's going to be a good game. Nice first win there. I think we played that pretty well. Uh, and to be honest, it might have not been as bad of a matchup as I thought it was. I just thought Graveyard wasn't going to be too easy for us to defend. But to be fair with us having Spear Goblins, we managed to... He has some pretty good value. We managed to jump up all the way up to 360 seconds. So we climbed up so much just off of that one win. And honestly, there's probably a lot of glitched accounts. So we we're probably already, you know, yeah, look at this. Like I'm going through the whole, you know, top, probably the whole top 10 is, yeah, this is insane. So we're probably already like top 300. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and search for the next one and see if we can keep climbing up. So here we go. Um, see if this guy wants to do anything. Just gonna go for a heal. Mm, I'm gonna mortar. I think it's fine as long as I got my e barbs in cycle. So go for a fisherman. Ooh, so probably RG. This is the RG deck if he's using it that I like using a lot. The one with you know Mother Witch. But he's got the e Wiz, so maybe it's just the same one with e Wiz instead of skeletons, which some people like using. And he is going to go for that. We can actually fireball the tower and the Mother Witch because he played it. Even though he tried playing it low, we were still able to get it in the radius of both. So it's a good thing that I noticed that. Honestly, I don't really think that was a very good RG. He should be able to defend himself with E-Barbs here, but I still don't think it was that good of a play. Just because, I don't know, it was a little aggressive. Although, we do have to defend these E-Barbs, um, so it might have not been a horrible play. I just thought it was a little aggressive, but hmm, he's not really going to get punished because of it, so I guess he's fine. I am in a minor here. He's going to be put in an awkward situation. He's going to have to probably... Yeah, he has to e was too, so because we played that minor, he had to spend 7 Elixir, essentially. Like He had to go for a Fisherman as well as an e was committing... You know, 7 Elixir, all because we played a 3 Elixir Minor, whereas otherwise he would have just played probably just like a Fisherman and only that on the Musketeer if I didn't go for that Minor. So that Minor was definitely a good play right there. So we're going to Mortar here. That most likely will be a Mortar Lock, and he should be... Um, ooh, I'm going to Minor here. Ice Golem, and then we're going to do our best to save our E-Barbs for his RG. I would rather not play them on those E-Barbs, so we can obviously... I'm going to Fireball the Mother Witch, just because it's going to be very annoying. I always like the Fireball the Mother Witch, you know, basically ASAP, because... I think that Mother Witch is probably right now one of the most, you know, annoying cards in the game. And if you have a Fireball, you might as well use it, like, every time. So we're going to go for our E-Barbs here. He's actually going to get really, really aggressive. Um... Okay, well, he just used his... Whoa. Well, 
Let's see. All right. And that's gonna be a good game. Um, yeah, I apologize for not talking at the end, but obviously, like me winning the game is the most important thing, and I think you guys agree. Um, like so, even though like I wasn't commenting, you're saying triple elixir is the hardest to commentate sometimes because there's so much going on. But yeah, it looks like it ended up paying off. Um, I didn't distract myself by talking. We ended up getting the win. Um. All right, here we go. We found our next game. Give this guy the good luck. Um, wow, dude, he's just gonna cycle a Tesla. So I'm definitely gonna mortar. Mm -hmm. Probably Expo. Not, I would say not a bad matchup. Just based off of like me playing mortar a little bit and seeing other mortar players. Expo is not that bad. The Expo player definitely can win, but I feel like if you play it well and you're not too aggressive, you should be fine because you can get a lot of value out of defensive mortars and their defensive Expos don't get as much value. So that's kind of my reasoning as to why I don't think it's that bad. He's actually gonna, okay, wow, he spent so much elixir. Um, I was just about to go for mortar, but I don't, uh, I probably should have honestly, cause he used so much elixir and then I could have just logged his archers. I probably should have done that. Yeah. Wow. He's going to let the mortar lock on. See, he was so low on elixir. That's what I was saying. So we're going to go ahead and log this. We're going to go for an ice golem. And then pretty much, if we fireball these, this expo, I'm pretty confident it's not going to get nearly as much damage as we got on his tower. Now that knight's going to be annoying. Good log on his end. But if we can get a miner down, then we're fine. Look at that. We got like a thousand, a 1,000 damage lead early on. This is exactly what we're looking for. I mean, he can come back. I think he's up an elixir right now. So we got to, yep, definitely see. I knew he was up an elixir. Try to log this. I'd like to get this mortar to lock on. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So we're going to have to fireball even though we're not hitting the tower. Because otherwise that expo would have been very just dangerous. You know, it would have gotten way too much damage on our tower. I'm trying to kind of predict an expo. Like, I'm thinking he's going to play one. Um, we'll actually mortar. And then we'll go ahead and ice golem. Maybe see if we can get like a musk on the expo. We do. So that's great. Um, I don't think we need to fireball this expo this time around because it's actually hitting the tower that has more hit points. And it was already almost dead anyway. And because he had to spend elixir to support that, he's not, uh, I mean, to kill the e-barbs, he's not going to be able to support his expo like he wants to. E-barb even makes it to the tower, gets a hit. He's really low on elixir now. So, yeah, we're just looking really good at this point. So, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. We should be, we should be good. So, he might, uh, he might expo here, but if he does, 
we should be completely fine because we have a mortar and an ice golem in cycle. I'm actually going to go ahead and mortar now. Yeah, I had a feeling he was going to expo anyway, so... I think we should we should just fireball because I don't know it's just better to be safe than sorry and at this point there's no need to like rush this game we already have a huge lead I mean we already have his tower down to like you know less than half of its health so I think if we just play this safe we'll be you know we'll be completely fine I'm actually gonna minor kind of try to juke him out here like we're gonna minor the tower um, so that way he thinks I'm going to play it on the expo, and then I don't. And then as a result, um, we end up getting some tower chip. So I honest, honestly changed my mind. I thought that this match could really go either way, and I thought Mortar had like a slight advantage. But from pulling this out, it looks like Mortar has a really solid matchup here. Um, just due to the fact that it's just so tough for them to get an expo lock. And it's... I'd say fairly easy for you to get a mortar to lock on their tower. So for that reason, I'd say it's just pretty easy for mortar. Um, and it certainly felt that way, just as long as you play it calm and you're not too aggressive. So yeah, working our way up here, I think we for sure can get to 5,900. I don't know about 6K. I don't even think anyone's at 6K yet, to tell you guys the truth. Like, because the season, you know, just started. I, I don't think anyone's at 6K. Maybe this the person who's currently like the highest right now might be at 6k or very close to it, but I I don't know. I'm I'm really not sure. Alright, here we go. So we found our next game versus MTP. So um we'll wait just a second, see if this guy wants to do anything. If not, I'll probably just go spear goblins or mortar. He's oh my gosh. Okay, gonna Pekka in the back first place. So we're gonna pressure. Hopefully he doesn't have like a Skarmie or something. He's gonna wizard. I thought he misplayed it, but then the wizard turned around last second. That was unfortunate, because if he did, I would have gone for the three crown there. Um, alright, I don't... What? What the... Huh? I don't know what this deck is. Um, well, that was awkward. I guess, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Let's just, uh, go move on to the next one. I, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, um, strange deck. Um, I guess I got caught off guard with the P.E.K.K.A. in the back first play of the game. Like, that's not something usually people do. Um, but, you know is what it is i guess anyway we found a game here versus chris bell i'm pretty sure this is the guy known for the no win condition deck um I'm, I'm pretty sure i've heard of this guy before do i know what he's using no um but i'm, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who supposedly doesn't have a win condition unless he's like not using that deck anymore so he's gonna have a tombstone here I'm gonna log it. Little, you know, could be a little risky if he has something that something else we'd want to log, but I don't know what else the better play would be in this situation. So I think I think we're fine doing that. We'll miner here. It's gonna have an inferno drag, so I guess we'll musk and it's gonna cycle arrows. Hmm. Very interesting. Not going to get much value out of those. So we'll mortar here. And he's going to have a cannon card. So cannon card... So I guess cannon card is really... If you consider him having a win condition, the cannon card would really probably be the only one then. I guess that's pretty fair to say. Lumberjack gets a little bit of damage. I'm not too concerned, though. And this E-Barb, I don't think he has enough Elixir to defend it. Yeah, it gets one hit. I was hoping he would get a second, but 
good enough, I suppose. All right, at least we know what he's using. He did get a little bit of damage that I probably could have prevented if I played the E-Barbs lower, but I didn't honestly expect the Lumberjack to go for my tower and not the E-Barbs. So he's just going to go... All right, I'm going to defensive order. Ooh, and he does have a baby dragon. Okay. That's gonna lock on the tower unless he played something. I'm just gonna play this really passively now, I think. Good value fireball. We gotta abuse the musketeer. Cause I think it's just, of everything in this matchup, the thing that probably gets me the most amount of value. This is not a good matchup though, if I'm being honest. We've just had a hard time. I, I think it really is the tombstone that's giving me a lot of trouble. Like, it's just, it's just annoying. Like, I can't really get through it. I'm gonna kill the cannon cart. Oh my gosh. Oof. Wow. What a game. I think Triple Elixir was all that we needed because we were able to cycle fireballs and with him only having arrows, we are finally able to get the damage we needed. Let's go. Um, I think we got time. Yeah, I'm probably going to play one more game. Uh, win or loss, we'll do one more. Um... That, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, he did, he actually doesn't have a win condition. He really doesn't. All right, here we go. This will be our last game. We're versus Gonza. So, give this guy the good luck. And we'll wait like a second or two. And if he's not going to do anything, I'll probably just minor. Yeah. Zappy. So, we firewall those. And I guess it might be recruits. Yep. So Mortar is going to get some really good value here. The only thing we got to watch out for is the flying machine. Um, he's okay. He's going to cage. So let's just get our really nice fireball off here. All right. Now we got to watch out for those real hogs because we just used our fireball. Many e barbs if he goes real hogs here. 
I know we're playing them a little late, but honestly, I think it's a better play than playing Mortar, just because we're going to get so much counter push potential off of these. In fact, I'm even going to go for a Miner. And if this gets down before the one cross is over, this is going to be not easy for him to defend without having to spend a lot of elixir like look at that he had to spend all that elixir and one e-barb still makes it to the tower and you know it gets a hit so we take the lead right back and i think we're even up a little bit of elixir too not a lot but i think we're up one or two elixir i'm pretty sure so let's just ice golem. him he's gonna go for all right we'll mortar them i'm gonna play spear goblins to try to yep Good fireball i don't even think that was a prediction on the musketeer i think he was just gonna play it anyway so we got a little lucky i just i just don't think that was a prediction for some reason because he because the mortar would have gotten damage and would have been annoying anyway but maybe it was a prediction i i don't know i'm gonna mortar guess we can musk All right, this is a good opportunity for us to get a lot of pressure in. His fireball was just missed. And that should be good game. Um, like, I mean, it's not over yet, but it, it's certainly at this point. Well, I almost threw the game. How about that? Well, I still might have, I don't know, but I almost did right there. We're going to Fireball. He might play an Electro Spirit into this too. Um, no, he doesn't, but yeah, that's going to be it. So GG, nice way to end the video. I'm almost through the game because of that Mortar, but we, we still managed to get it. Get the win, I mean. So we're going to end 176th in the world, probably top 100 because of all the glitched accounts. I literally went through the leaderboard um and like everyone in the top 50 is glitched for the most part i don't even know oh you know how you check the arrows so let's see who the highest person is in the world right now sightless is number one at 64th he's number one so we're like top 100 basically um mini mentor too so you look at the arrows that's how you know beginning of season check the arrows you know you got all that you got this but then like bro all these other people are glitched. It's nuts. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it for the video. Uh, make sure to like it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And remember to use code BOSS if you're buying the password. Thanks again. Until next time, guys.